In today's episode of Unsolved Mysteries, we're going to be diving in into a mysterious murder case from the early 90s known as the murder of Dick Hansen. What's interesting about this case is that a man was shot late at night by a killer who had absolutely no connection to him, leaving the police with no information or clues to his motive. So, who is Dick Hansen? Why was he shot late at night? Also, who is the unknown killer? Was there really no connection between the victim and the killer? These are questions that still need answers, but let's dive deep into the clues to come up with our own theories and speculations. Let's get into this case now. On the night of April 29, 1991, former college football star Dick Hansen and several friends went out to a bar for drinks near San Jose, California. Dick Hansen at the time was just getting over a tough divorce, so he decided he needed a night out. So on April 29, 1991, he asked a friend, Jean, to meet him at his favorite hangout. According to Jean, she said, quote, He was in a very good mood, very good. He was very happy with where he was. He was very happy with what was going on in his life and where he was headed, end quote. At approximately 1 a.m., he and his friend Jean left in her car. Then at 1.30 a.m., they arrived at the restaurant where he had left his pickup truck. While they were sitting in her car, another one pulled up behind them. At first, they thought its driver was going to the mailbox. She initially asked Dick if he thought they should move up a bit to give him more room, but he disagreed as he had plenty. However, the driver behind them sat in his car the whole time while they were talking, and when they were ready to go, Jean agreed to follow Dick in her car because she was unfamiliar with the area. Jean said, quote, There were no cars at all, and I remarked to Dick, I said, This is funny, yours is the only car left on the street. So we were sitting there, talking, and this car pulls up behind us. And I looked, and I thought, I don't even think it was too strange because there was a mailbox on the sidewalk there. The man just sat there, he didn't do anything and I was kind of half turned in the seat so I could look at Dick, and I could see him out in the corner of my eye." End quote. When they each left in their separate vehicles, the man did so too. When they arrived at the traffic light, he followed them as they made their left turns. Along another road, Jean changed lanes and he followed her exactly. At the next traffic light, Dick signaled to her to follow him onto the freeway. The man continued to follow them for over 10 miles, even after they pulled onto the freeway. Jean changed lanes a number of times thinking she could outwit him, but to no avail. She even slammed on the brakes while driving on the freeway, but he did so too. Feeling spooked, Jean finally pulled over beside Dick's truck and asked him to go to the police because of the relentless man, but he could not hear her and told her to follow him off at the next exit. She reported that the man followed them both off the highway, even though she nearly missed the exit. When they pulled over, Jean pointed the man out in his car and Dick went back to confront him. Jean saw him gesture towards her car, and when Dick asked him what he wanted, Dick then stepped back and shouted at him. It was then that he fired his gun at Dick twice. Jean frantically rushed back to see if she could help, then froze in fear, staring at the man who stared back at her for a few seconds before taking off into the night. Unfortunately, Dick was dead by the time paramedics arrived. Dick Hansen was shot twice, once in the chest and once in the neck. He never regained consciousness and was pronounced dead at the hospital, unfortunately leaving behind two daughters who were aged 11 and 13. According to Detective Les Richards of Sunnyvale, California Police Department, the authorities had trouble ascertaining a motive and said, quote, As far as we know, Dick Hansen did not know his assailant. What makes this particular case extremely difficult is that most homicides boil down to common denominators of sex, money, or drugs and network out from there. We have not been able to put this particular homicide in any of those categories so that we can develop a motive." End quote. The suspect was described to be a white man with dark complexion. He may be Hispanic or Mediterranean. During the scene of the crime, he looked like he was in his late 30s or early 40s and probably today he would be in his early 60s. He wore eyeglasses with large black frames. His car looked like a 1970 Pontiac GTO Le Mans. It was a two-door coupe with a dull faded light gray or blue paint job. From the beginning, investigators had trouble finding a suspect and a motive in the case. Jean and some investigators, however, speculate that the killer's stature resembled that of a football player and her license plate number being, quote, 49RHUGS, end quote, which was a reference to the San Francisco 49ers football team. This brought speculation that Dick might have gotten killed by a fanatical fan of a rival team, but in the end, 
The killer has never been identified, and he remains at large to this day. Hence why this case is still unsolved. Hey guys and gals, this is Mr. Shin Ramen, and I just want to thank you for making it this far. Did you enjoy the video? If so, it would be greatly appreciated if you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel for more future content. Till next time, stay safe and stay scared.